and I'm the cutoff and I make it $60 to go. Small blind decides to make the call and so does the straddle. Ace jack of spades is a great hand even if we're going three ways. The flop comes eh as it comes queen nine nine rainbow. Not a whole lot to go with with the action checked over to me. Feels like a pretty easy check get the show down. Realize my equity or at least the backdoor variety of it. And the turn card comes that as it comes the deuce of spades. Pretty nice as we now pick up the nut flush draw. A little weird though when the small blind decides to lead out for $160. With the action now on me. Never fully in the nut flush draw. I'm probably going to be good at some frequency of the time here. I make the call and we're going off to a river card that comes the four of hearts. It's not a bad card. I mean, but it's not a good card. We don't make the nut flush here, but as we also mentioned beforehand, all the draws do miss. So the straight draws, even though I do block some of them, jack 10, there's other ones that exist that might have turned their hand into a bluff as well. With our opponent decided to bet $300, at this point I just get a little sticky. Like I said, considering some of the draws brick out, well, all of them do, I guess. I just got to pay to see it. Our opponent ends up showing the goods as he shows king, queen. Unfortunate for us as yet again, we're in the hole and we're battling back, but it's never ever been a problem for me in the past, specifically at the commerce. Welcome back to Close to Broke everyone. My name is Kieran and in today's episode, we get part two of our ridiculous session at the Commerce. And if you guys thought that last session was already ridiculous enough, I can't thank you guys enough for the support on that video, by the way. This episode is even more so ridiculous because either we lose it all or we make it all back. At this point in the episode, I think we're stuck somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys so much for the support. It means more to me than you guys will ever know. And uh, without a further ado, let's enjoy today's really ridiculous episode. Let's hop in. The action ends up folding to me and I'm in the small blind. Again, that straddle is on for $20. We look down at pocket queens. I end up making it $80 to go. It's getting deep into the night and let's see what happens. It gets over to the straddle who, unbeknownst to me, didn't like that price of $80, but not because it was too much, but because it wasn't enough. He ends up 3-betting to $280. With the action back on me, I feel like a 4-bet is in order. Blind versus straddle or blind raise. Anything can really go on here, and I'm out of position for the entirety of this thing, so let's at least be the aggressive leader. I make it $700 as a 4-bet, and my opponent snap jams all in. I have $3,500 behind. This is a jam for in the neighborhood of 200 plus big blinds. This is a freaking massive amount of money. I mean, I've played significantly bigger pots in my life, but this is like a lot of big blinds and even more so when I just freaking lose. I go deep into the tank. And at this point, I pose the question to you guys. Do you call here or do you fold? I will say this is one of the crazier action players at the table, but even then, None of the players that were doing this were five or six betting all in pre-flop with absolute air balls. And that's the problem. Let's give them a realistic range here of a recreational player. Okay, ace, king offsuit is the one hand that we're, I guess, ahead of. Aces, kings, maybe the same hand sometimes, queens. Does he ever do this with jacks? I don't think so, honestly. So that means he's definitely not doing it with tens. Is he ever doing it with ace, queen? Probably not. So if his combinations of hands include ace, king, aces, and kings, uh, I'm only racing against one of them. So after what was my longest tank ever, for sure on this vlog, and uh, I'm sure Mike will put a time lapse here for you guys, I end up making a discipline lay down here. So at a later point in the session, I would ask my opponent what he has. And just because I'd really like to know honestly what you guys put him on or what you guys would do, I'm going to save that till the end of the session to give you guys the details on what at least he told me in person. Well, I can't even get my wits about me as the very next shuffle, the very next hand, we pick up another playable hand that uh, the cutoff makes it $75 to go. We look down at ace king offsuit here from the button, three bet to $225. The button is a very powerful place in poker and in today's session, to be quite honest, our buttons have been blessed with some really solid holdings. 
The trouble is we haven't been hitting flops or we just haven't been able to get paid off. In this case, it looks like at least one of the problems is getting solved as our opponent ends up making the call. We're going heads up in position to a flop that comes 8-7-7 with two clubs and a diamond. Not that great. Some straight draws exist, but again, not great for my specific range here and not great for my holding. Turn card comes with five of spades. So doesn't bring in the front door flush, as well as the simple fact that, you know, this does actually bring in the straight draw that is now completed. Either way, my opponent decides to bet $225. Mine is way too strong to fold here. When you check the flop, you've got to be okay with making a big call down if you have to. We're going off to a river card that comes to five of hearts. So to be quite honest, this is a pretty good run out. We end up seeing a paired board here. My hand's going to be really good a ton of the time. The trouble is, what is my opponent going to charge me to see if that is actually the case? Luckily for me, my opponent decides to bet $350, which of course is like a reasonable bet. But in reality, I mean, it's less than half pot. This is a pretty easy call for me. The one thing is obviously you can balance this out, whether it's a bluff or value. I think you can easily do this with an over pair like tens or nines. I'm a calling station, but unlucky for him that he's bluffing this time around. Luckily for us, we're going to be taking this pot in our direction. And hopefully we can really set up the latter half of this session with some positive play and some things and some run goods all the good stuff. This very next hand is exactly what I was talking about in the previous hand. Under the Gun decides to make it $100 to go, who's that action player we've been talking about the whole session. The Button decides to make the call, who also is one of the action players. And I find myself in the big blind with pocket aces, the weapons of mass destruction. Man, oh man. I end up three betting here to $305. In my opinion, it's just way too small. Against these two guys, even though I have aces, we've got to charge them. $400 or $500, they're going to call anyways, so why not build a pot? They both make the call because the raise size is much too small, and we're going off to a flop that comes 4-4-3 with two spades and a diamond. We do, in fact, have the ace of spades, and as we mentioned before, this is a great example of a time where I'll be checking a board that's not great for my range with a massive holding, pocket aces. I end up checking it, the action gets checked through, things are going okay, and the turn card comes a jack of hearts. Time to start betting for value. I make it $300 to go. Only the initial razor makes the call. And we're going off to a river card that comes a nine of hearts. So one less hand that I beat, which is pocket nines. But again, what the hell would I be doing playing poker if I was scared of every single river? At this point, I want to bet for value. $1,000 is a new price of poker. Hoping that my opponent has a jack that he's unwilling to fold or a random middling pair that he's just incapable of folding. Anyways, he goes into the tank before eventually deciding on a fold. Unlucky for us as yet again, we are incapable of getting any more value. Like I said, although these characters have been unbelievably loose pre-flop, for the most part post-flop, it's like pretty regular poker. My phone just died and I just played a hand and I'm uh, just... Go with me, uh, a lot of emotion, so bear with me, guys. Okay, so uh, middle position raises, uh, solid reg, plays here all the time. Every time I come here, he's here. He makes it 60. Um, somebody from the blinds calls on the straddle and I make the call as well. We're going three ways to a flop that comes five, seven, four, two hearts and a diamond. So I actually have the third nut flush draw here as well as an open ender. Not too bad, I have queen six of hearts. I decide to check it. The action ends up checking it through. We're going off to a turn card that comes a seven of spades. It pairs a board, not a great card for my exact hand, but it's it's a really good card for my range. I decided to lead out here for $125. Only the initial raiser decides to make the call. The other player folds, and we're going off to a river card that comes a beautiful jack of hearts. Exactly what we were looking for. We make ourselves our flush. I think we can get called by a ton of stuff here that's inferior. I decided to size up going pretty massive for $500. And unfortunately, after a long tank, my opponent decides to raise to 2,000. Uh, I can't think of a single hand that's worse than me. So maybe this was nitty. And uh, I, a lot of us joke around and say that, oh, do you even have a fold button? It's here. Against a specific player, although like I said, he's a pretty you know reasonable reg. He is is pretty tight pre-flop or excuse me, post-flop. So I'm gonna give him the credit. I ended up making the fold and uh, made it fairly quickly. And uh, the opponent said I made a good fold. So I'll trust him on it, face value, who knows, but I'm super tilted. <sighs> the VIP, the action player that we've been talking about quite a bit, he decides to make a $60 from early position. The button makes a call. 
I found myself in the big blind as we found ourselves in the last hand, and I decided three bet to two hundred and sixty dollars. Forgive me, as there is no video in this hand, as well as for the rest of the episode, I don't think there's any video because my phone had died. Again, this is like a seven hour session, so obviously that makes sense. But either way, and we looked down at Ace Deuce offsuit, pretty horrible hands. Definitely not a hand that I want to be calling out of position with against some pretty electric players post flop. But why not three bet with it? Let's play a little aggressive. We've been pretty, you know, snug, I guess I would say, for the most part. Haven't been getting much out of line. I make it $260 to go. Only the initial raiser calls. And we're going off to a flop that's pretty, pretty bad. King, nine, six, two clubs and a spade. I don't have a club or a spade in my hand. I decided to see bet though, because why not fire and fire away? $300 to go. My opponent decides to make the call. And we're going off to a turn card that comes of five of diamonds. The one thing I will say is that my opponent had definitely paused on the flop on figuring out what the hell to do. And that's a pretty easy live read that I was able to pick up on there. Unfortunately, again, I wasn't able to capture it on camera. But I don't know, just the way he was just really uncertain, it, it felt very genuine to me. So when that's the case, sure, it can go either way. Maybe he had such a good hand he was considering raising. But I think for me and the live tail that I received, I think he kind of wanted to fold, but just wasn't willing to fold to that point. Going to be blasting any turn card. The five of diamonds is a great one to blast on because... Why the hell not? I decide to make it $500 to go, and my opponent pretty quickly decides to make the fold. The scary thing was is my opponent didn't have very much more behind if he decided to jam. So lucky for us, this, you know, potential punt was uh, ended up turning into a, a trick play. We got a first down on it. So continuing on with the session, make sure to click the like button if you haven't already. Super grateful and thankful for you guys all to be hanging around and enjoying today's episode. Well, for the third time in today's session, we pick up pocket aces. In this case, I make it $60 to go from under the gun. Folds all the way to the action player in the big blind who decides to 3-bet to $160. Action's back on me. I decide to 4-bet here to 560 bucks. Again, sizings don't really matter that much to me against these specific players. They're going to give me action if they have a decent or at least decent to them holding. So, 560 is the way to go. He ends up making the call. We're going off to a flop that is king 6-3 with two clubs and a diamond with the action checked over to me as the simple fact is i don't contain a club here i'd like to bet a little bit on the larger side half pot seems fair i make it 600 dollars to go at this point i notice my opponent's considering folding he's going back and forth with it when i offer him the option say hey look if you don't want to fold but you don't really want to call how about you call and we just check it down he says that he loves that idea. It makes sense to him, so he decides to make the call. I agree to check it down with him. The turn card comes at 10 of clubs, which is not great. And the river card comes at 10 of spades. We show our pocket aces, and he shows two red pocket eights. Awesome. We end up getting more value when we just shouldn't have. Our aces really haven't gotten a ton of value. I think that was the biggest hand we had with aces, luckily for us. Our little bit of table talk and our little bit of negotiation tactics end up helping us out there. We're really close to breaking even on today's session after being stuck over two or $3,000 at some point. So that feels really great. Looking to turn it around, we have one more hand in today's session which is a really fun one as it's let's not spoil it let's hop into the last hand of the day all righty under the gun makes it 60 dollars to go he's definitely one of the better players at the table i find myself next to act with pocket nines i make the call the straddler makes the call who's that action gentleman from the previous hand and we're going off to a flop that comes jack 10 5 rainbow actions checked over to me i'm the in position player my hand plays significantly better as a check than a bet here so that's what I do. We're going off to a turn card that comes at four of spades, bringing a backdoor flush draw. Again, not awesome for several reasons as we don't have a set here and even less awesome when the straddler decides to lead off for a hundred bucks. The action now on me after the fold from the initial razor. Again, I think folding here would be a little nitty against a specific player. So I ended up making the call planning to evaluate most rivers, and our river comes a pretty good one as it comes a jack of diamonds. It's good because less likely for my opponent to have a jack. It's bad if he does have a jack because it's less likely that I can get away from it. With the action of my opponent, he decides to bomb it for $400. I don't even know if he knows what's going on because I barely know what's going on. But look, my hand's just too good to fold, although I do block the bottom end of the straight draws. I don't block the king queens. I don't block the ace queens. I don't block the random missed straight draws that exist or the random flush draws that exist as I don't contain a spade in my holding. And after quite a bit of tanking, I decide to make the call. My opponent lets me know that was a good call 
and chose three high, three deuce offsuit. So remember the last session when I said that I jammed with ace deuce, which was kind of a punt. It was a punt, but against a specific player, it probably wasn't. Yeah. It doesn't look that bad now after all, right? Either way, I can't thank you guys enough for making it through today's session. This was a really long one. I played like 20 hands for the vlog, and I feel like having him in one vlog was ridiculous and just way too much work for poor Mike to do all by himself. So that does it. I can't thank you guys enough for watching today's episode. Let's go over to me in person to see how the hell we feel at the end of today's session. But before we do, I'll let you guys know, in the pocket queen's hand, my opponent told me that he folded, or excuse me, that I folded to his hand, which was ace king suited. So yeah, back to me in person. Well, 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 don't call me Leon Edwards, but uh, what a gosh darn comeback. We'll get to the numbers shortly. Spoiler alert, it's nothing ridiculous, but man, I'm freaking proud of myself for so many reasons, but one of them being that I wanted to be tilted so bad. And I think at the end of the first video, I was frustrated. Rightly so. The table was amazing. Freaking amazing. Literally the best 510 game I've ever been in my whole life. Or 510-20 game I've probably been in my whole life. I just wasn't getting hit with a lot of craziness post-flop. Sure, some stuff happened and some stuff came up and blah, 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 blah. But uh, yeah, we were just not getting a ton of really massive pots shipped in our way. Just to wrap up and summarize today's session, we were into the game for 40... 4,500 exactly and we were out for 57.35 not bad we're gonna take it after being stuck at least like 15 to 2k at one point uh well immediately actually because we ended up losing that hand with ace deuce which was just a massive punt but beyond that i mean i'm pretty happy with the way we played and to be fair with myself i made a guesstimation against that player when I had ace deuce that ended up being okay. And I'm sure it's not like solver approved or whatever the hell um, against that specific player. Like I could be doing that for value with uh, what I saw him playing post flop and other spots. So shout out to him. He was an absolute freaking. whether you're good, great, bad at the game. If you can put people in tough spots, that's, that's just cool to me. So I was in a bunch of tough spots today. I ended up making an incorrect fold preflop with Queens, but uh, even then, I really cannot crucify myself. It's so hard to end up there with the worst hand in Queens and Ace King is the only hand that I can think of. Honestly, really happy with my fold. I think all around we played really, really well. We found ways to uh, get a couple hero calls in at the uh, latter half of the session with the nines there. And otherwise, yeah, I just want to thank you guys all dearly for watching these videos, for supporting me so consistently. Uh, it means more to me than you guys can honestly understand. And I know I say that all the time, it feels like every video, but you guys just have no idea. When I'm in there and when I'm like, I don't know, I feel like you guys hold me accountable. So when I'm about to do something stupid, I'm like, all right, like the CDB familiar would not approve of this stupidity. So let's not do this. So all of that being said, satisfied with the session. It's three o'clock in the morning. I've been here since like eight or, so, or seven or something. I'm super, super tired. It's time to get home. I hate playing this late, but thank you guys dearly. I feel forever indebted for you guys putting through two massive sessions or one session that was really freaking long. Have a lovely day, stay happy, stealthy, and more importantly, guys, if you guys could do me a favor, deuces. Mm -hmm.